folks, welcome back to the channel. It's Liquid here, and today I want to talk a little bit about small cap stocks because the Global Research Department of BOA said that small caps are at their cheapest level in 14 months, and these stocks look like a buy right now. Of course, small cap companies in general are stocks with market caps between $300 million and $2 billion. So this is not the Magnificent 7. It's not even any of the S&P 500 companies. It's purely stocks with smaller capitalization. And if we look at the forward P.E. ratio of small cap companies, for example, using the S&P 600 small cap index, we can see that as of this week in November, the P.E. ratio is just 12.9 which does look to be quite low. And every time the PE falls to this level in the past, since 1999, you get PE expansion soon after. Now compare this to the S&P 500, which are all large cap companies, and you can see the forward PE ratio is 18.7. Not only is this higher than the 12.9 ratio for small caps, but also relative to large caps itself, measuring against its own historical average, I would say this is not cheap. It's not super expensive either, like in the year 2000 or 2021, where it went up above 23 times, but it's still relatively elevated when you compare it to other segments like mid caps or small caps. And when we overlay them on top of each other, you can see the green line is small caps, and the red line is the PE for large caps. So sometimes large caps are expensive and small caps are cheap, but then other times, like in 2010, you have small caps that are trading at a higher valuation than large caps. So they go back and forth overtaking each other. And right now there is a huge gap between them. So the idea of buying more small caps right now, as opposed to large caps, is that eventually when these PE ratios invert again, and the large caps becomes cheaper and small caps become more expensive, the small cap will perform better relative to the S&P 500. So for example, if the PE for the S&P 500 remains flat, then that means the S&P 600 small caps would have PE expansion in order for the PE ratio to go higher. And if that's the case, then you'll see higher returns in small cap than large cap. On the other hand, you may have something like the early 2000s where the PE ratios of both large and small caps went down. However, because large caps started from such a high valuation, the P.E. ratio had significantly more room to fall. Whereas if you were in small caps, yeah, you lost a little bit of money from, say, late 2000 to 2002, but you were better off than if you had held large cap stocks where the P.E. ratio dropped from like 25 all the way down to 15. That's a 40% decline in the P.E. ratio, which means if earnings stayed consistent, you have a 40% drop in the stock price. One way to get exposure to small cap stocks is with a simple ETF. The two obvious ones are from Vanguard, which offers a small cap ETF, ticker VB, as well as the iShares small cap ETF, ticker IJR. Both are comparable to each other. Here you can see their returns over the last few years. Vanguard's ETF is in orange and IJT is in purple. Pretty similar looking chart comparing these two. Both of these are in US dollars with low expense ratios. If you're buying with Canadian dollars on the Toronto Stock Exchange, you can look at the iShares US Small Cap Index ETF with the ticker XSMC on the Canadian Stock Exchange. Now, valuation-wise, the small cap sector does look like it's relatively cheap right now. But what about technically? I'm going to be using the iShares S&P Small Cap 600 value ETF and just get a breakdown of where the stock has been and where it might be going in the future. So starting with a broad view, I'm on the weekly chart, and I'll just zoom in a bit here so we can see the candles. So really ever since the end of 2021, we've kind of been in this down channel. However, the ETF has hit the bottom here and bounced off that. So it would make sense to go for this middle line here, which it looks like it hit a couple of weeks ago and it got rejected off of that. So it's either going to go higher and try to retest that level or it's going to drop lower and retest this bottom line. As you can see in the past, this middle line here acted as support. But when it broke through that, it acted as resistance. So the market continued to fall. This was a fake breakout of that middle line continue to fall. So right now, this is acting as resistance. Let's go to the daily chart to see if we can learn anything else from here. Okay, it looks like there's a double bottom here with the market bottom in October of last year, and it reached that point again. 
in October this year, so basically one year later. Now, if this is the bottom, then we can use this trend line over here, connecting the bottoms of these candles here, 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 and here. And if I zoom out a bit, and you can see right now the market is coming up and it's trying to break out back above that trend line. It was really close a couple of weeks ago on November 15th. The market wicked over the line, but it did not close over it. So it still closed below the line, which is bearish. And right now it looks like it's just consolidating within this range here. So we'll have to see if we get a higher move like this and it back tests and moves up higher, this would be very bullish for the stock market because it means this purple line is going to once again act as support and it's a pretty strong support because there are multiple touches on it. The other thing that could happen is that this touch on the 15th was a rejection and small cap stocks are going to go lower and fill these gaps over here that it left behind and maybe retest the support down here around 82.5. So because I don't know which way the market wants to go yet, I'm a little bit weary about putting money into this ETF right now, but as a dollar cost averaging strategy, it might be a good idea to put a little bit of money in right now, wait to see what the market does, and then put more in later on. If it goes down, then increase the dollar cost averaging amount. If it goes up, then just stick with the same amount. You can also look at other stocks to try to give you ideas of what the market might do. For example, I've been watching TD stocks for a while. This is TD Bank on the Toronto Stock Exchange. I've been watching this triangle play out for the last year or so, and it's almost a perfect textbook version of a triangle where you have multiple touches on the top and you have a very solid flat support line at around the $77 level. Typically what happens with a triangle is it bounces between these two yellow lines until it gets to near the point here and then it either goes up or it goes down. Earlier in the month when it broke out through here, I was pretty excited to see that it was going to go higher. But as usual, I wanted to wait for the back test. And so far it's ambiguous. As you can see here, the last day, Tuesday, so that's basically today, um, this candle went below this yellow line, but then it closed above it. So that's still technically bullish, but we'll have to wait and see how the rest of the week plays out. If we do get a red candle or a candle that's below this yellow line, then that's going to be bearish because it means that this was a fake breakout and the stock is likely to go lower after that. So I'll keep an eye on things and let you guys know how things unfold. Thanks a lot for watching and until next time.